Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to show you the difference between soft and hard light. So I get asked a lot of questions about what modifiers I use and what situations I use specific modifiers in. And two of the ones that people see me use all the time are a deep focus reflector and a beauty dish. So while they might look a little bit similar because of their shape, they're, they're very different in how I use them and there's specific reasons behind that. So you need to know how light behaves and really understand it before you know how to use certain modifiers or really any modifier. And there's three basic rules or guidelines that I kind of go by that I remember. Number one is the size of the modifier. So the smaller it is, the harder the light is. The bigger it is, the softer it is. The second one is the distance from the subject. The closer it is, the softer it is. The further you pull it back, the harder it is. And the third one is, is there any diffusion? Anything that blocks the light, that spreads it out or softens it, any, like a, a, a layer of diffusion, like that might be on a beauty dish, like, like this that goes around the outside. I'm not exactly sure how many stops this is. Uh, it might be a full stop or a half stop. I'm I really honestly not 100% sure, but it goes on the outside of the 24 inch Westcott beauty dish. And it makes the shadow, the transition between shadow and light softer, so it spreads out the shadow, but it also kills a little bit of power on the light when you do that. It takes some of it away, so you need to know that going into it. So if you have a really hard light and you put a diffuser over the front of it, yes, it's gonna make the light softer, but you're also gonna lose power from your strobe, so you're gonna have to compensate for that. So keep that in mind also. So I thought a good way to illustrate this and explain it better to people is to set up two of my favorites, the Beauty Dish and the Deep Focus, and take the same shot with both of them so you can try to understand why I use each one the way that I do. So one of the biggest differences between these two modifiers is they do look similar in shape, but one of them is about, the Beauty Dish is, is about twice as big as the Deep Focus. And because of the shape of the Deep Focus, I use it for action shots outside when it's bright for athletes, or even if it's not bright, because you can get, you can back up, which will allow me to shoot wide angle and then still aim the light in a certain area and hit and channel all of my light in one direction so I get more power out of my strobe. And the silver interior coupled with that helps me get a little bit higher output. So if I want to underexpose the sky or the background, I can. Whereas the Beauty Dish can do that when it's closer, but the light, because of the shape of it, because of the shape of the modifier, because it's bigger and it's not as concentrated, when you back it up, it is gonna spread, or it is gonna spread out more, so it's not gonna concentrate the light, so you're not gonna have quite as much power. You can diffuse both of them. The Beauty Dish also has a deflector plate so I've got the diffusion taken off right now, and you can see this plate in the middle. It's right in front of the flash head, so the light hits that, bounces back into the modifier, and then spreads out. So that's gonna kill the hot spot, but it's, it's also, the, like I said, the light's gonna spread out more because of the shape of this, and it's not gonna be as concentrated in one area, whereas the deep focus doesn't have that. It's going to allow you to concentrate in the light in one specific spot more. Here's a little bonus tip for you also. We're just basically setting this up like a headshot in the studio. I've got a Westcott Octa L on a FJ400 behind her. And we've got both layers, it's got inner diffusion and outer diffusion, we've got both of those on. So I'm gonna turn the light on, I'm gonna take an ambient shot just to, just to get the light pretty non-existent in here as far as ambient goes, and then turn that on just high enough so that it's, it's totally white and blown out, but not so much that it's gonna, it's gonna produce a lot of flare because anytime you have a light angle to the camera, it is gonna produce flare. So I've got my computer here that I'm gonna tether to and I've got Capture One pulled up so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, so I've got the FJX3S remote here because I'm shooting Sony so I can control all three lights separately. So I've got that backlight, that Octa L on group C. They're all on the same channel, channel 11, and I've got that on group C and I'm gonna turn that on Actually, I'm gonna leave it off and take a test shot first. So I'm at 1 125th F5.6 ISO 100. So just zoom into where I'm gonna be for the real picture. And you can see it's not totally black, but it's pretty close. That's what we want. We want the ambient pretty much non-existent. So we're gonna turn the backlight on now. And I've got it set to a power of five and a half out of nine. Cambry, take, move your right foot out this way a little bit, a little bit more. There you go, good, okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up to the exposure warning button here and press that. And so everything's red, so that means that it is white. It's completely blown out, it's 100% white. I'm gonna turn this down half a stop just to make sure that's where I need to be, because I don't want it, like I said, I don't want it to be too bright. And that one, oh, okay. Well, that was 
still blown out. So we're gonna go down to four and a half on the power. So we don't wanna get too much flare bouncing back. Okay, so now we're starting to lose it down at the bottom a little bit, it looks like. Let's just make sure, go down to four. And, oh, okay. All right, so now it's not totally red. That means it's not totally white at the top. So we're gonna go back up to four and a half. I think that probably is a good, good spot to be at. So now I've got both of these set on different groups. I'm gonna show you them separately. Neither one have diffusion on them. The Beauty Dish, I would usually use the front diffusion. The Deep Focus, I wouldn't, because like I said, this one is gonna give you a higher output. So I use it outside to underexpose the background. So I don't want the diffusion in front. And the reason I told you that before, that will soften the light, but it also cuts down the power, which I'm using this to maximize the power. So it kind of is counterintuitive to use it. I, I know that the trade-off for that is gonna be harder light, but with action shots or team pictures, it's not quite as important for it to be soft. So, and then you have to think, I used to use seven foot umbrellas outside for team pictures when I would have like five to 10 kids and I would use one or two of them. And especially too, that gets hard to deal with, especially if you don't have an assistant, because if there's any wind at all, they're gonna blow over. So I started to use these instead, and I usually have two to four set up, depending on how many kids are in the picture. You really gotta be careful with that and put them in the right spot because it would be, it's very easy to get hot spots and to get part of the picture brighter than other parts. And if you don't have them even in the right, in the right distance from the subject. So you really have to know what you're doing to be able to use multiple deep focus reflectors for group shots outside, but it can be done. I do it, I do it a lot, but it did take some practice to get to that point to where I was comfortable doing it. Um, okay, so we're gonna use this one first, and it's on group A. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that one on, and we're gonna start out at four, we're gonna start out at five. Power of five out of 10 just to see, or five out of nine just to see what it looks like. All right, ready? Good, okay. Okay, that's about right. Now, you can see, I'm gonna turn this exposure warning off, so now you can see we got a pretty no, uh, harsh nose shadow. We've got it about 45 degrees to the left and about angled 45 degrees down, which is, that's Rembrandt lighting because it's gonna leave a little corner pocket of, of light on her left side over here. So that's, that's a pretty typical way that I'll light. We've got dark shadows and we've got pretty hard edges on the shadows too. So that's, that's because of the nature of the modifier like I was explaining. So we're gonna lower this one and take the exact same shot with the beauty dish to see the difference. So I'm gonna put that group to sleep and then turn group B on. And so I know that this modifier is gonna need more power from the light because of the fact it's spreading the light out. It's not gonna give me as much power from the same, the same setting. So if I had this on five, in other words, it wouldn't be as bright as that one. So let's start out at seven and see what we look like. Okay, all right. That's right, so it looks, it's a little bit darker. Let's go up half a stop. Okay. Good. All right, let me get rid of this one just so, okay, so that one looks about right. Those look like they're exposed the same. You can see clearly how much harsher the shadow is from her nose underneath her chin. Anytime you have a harder modifier or har harder light from a modifier, you are going to get little shadows created by the texture of somebody's skin throughout the picture. And you may not notice it, but there's gonna be little tiny shadows everywhere because of the nature of light, because it is hard. And that makes everything show up a little bit more. The shadows are gonna be darker. So if somebody has rough skin, it's gonna make it more prominent than if you use a softer modifier. That, that's, that's the reason that a lot of times natural light for people with bad skin is really good. Or if you shoot wide open and turn the light down, that can also help. And then using modifiers that are softer, obviously also will help, help alleviate that problem. You can shoot, and hard light looks great, but you gotta know how to use it correctly, and you gotta know that some people don't handle it as well as others. Okay, so now I'm gonna move these both in and then take a, shot, a couple of shots a little bit closer, more like a portrait. This would be backed up more like an action shot. So the power of that, of the, of the beauty dish, was at 7.5, whereas the deep focus was at five. So that's two and a half stops more power. So let's say that you're outside and you've got the deep focus at full power and it's properly exposed given the distance from the subject that you're at. It's giving you, you know, the exposure that you want. You would not be able to switch out the beauty dish with it because it wouldn't be powerful enough. It's two and a half stops lower power than that is. And that's, that's both with no diffusion. Now they do have a silver version of this also, Westcott does. This is the 24 inch Joe Grimes beauty dish. 
That they have a silver version also that is more specular and, and gives a little bit more output, but it's still not gonna be quite as bright as that or as concentrated. And we're gonna stay at the same angle, about 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees down. Okay, so I'm gonna stay at five just to show you the same power about half the distance from our subject. All right, ready? Good, now that's way too bright. So let's go down. I'm at five out of nine, let's go to two. Maybe two and a half, and I think we'll be good. All right, ready? Good, all right. Okay, good, all right, so you can still see there's still deep, dark shadows. That is quite a bit softer than before. Still, it's a little bit harsh, so let's move that. Actually, let's, before we do that, let's put a layer of diffusion on it and see what it does. So these deep focus reflectors come with this sock here that we can put on the front. So I don't know, I don't know how much darker that's going to be, but it is going to be darker. I would say probably a couple of stops, maybe one, one or, one or two. And that's, that's probably more like two. So I'm at two and a half, so let's go up to four and a half. Do both hands on your hips. Let's vary it up a little bit. There you go, good. Good, all right. Still not quite bright enough, so let's go up two and a half stops. There we go. All right, that's about the same. So there's not a whole lot of difference. You can see that the shadows are getting a little less dark. They're a little bit more opened up. Not a huge difference, but a little one. Okay, so now let's replace that with the beauty dish and try that with and without the diffusion. So I think that was two and a half stops difference. Okay. All right, so let's put that first one to sleep, turn the second one back on. And all right, this is gonna be way too bright. Yep just like the other one. So there was the, that's about the same as the deep focus. So we're gonna go down two and a half stops to, to a power of five, we were at seven and a half. So now we're gonna go to five. Good. So you can see that's even softer. So the deep focus was, with no diffusion was the hardest and then we put the diffusion on a little bit softer, just a tad and then this is obviously the softest that we've had so far. And now we'll add the diffusion to that. And th so this is gonna be the most flattering, even though hard light can be, can look really great if you use it correctly. A lot of times it looks good with fill, like if you have a second light or maybe a fill board on the other side, opposite the light so it can fill in those shadows a little bit so they're not quite so dark. Okay, so let's go back up to seven and a half, two stop, two and a half stops higher. Let's see what we get here, good. A little bit too bright. Go back down to seven. And I'm gonna go back down to six and a half because it's still, there we go, okay. So you can see that that is by far, I think the most flattering one probably just because everything is a lot softer. So the, the skin's gonna look better. And you can, so if you wanted to, like I said, you could add another light over here to the side and then fill in those shadows even more. So you can make it even more flattering. But if you're not sure, soft light can, all, can, can be an easy way to go just to make sure that you're gonna make somebody's skin look the best you can. If you wanna play with hard light, that's a great idea, but like I said, you've gotta know how to do it. You've gotta know like what you can use to fill it in with and when you need to do it and when you don't. Okay, so just to recap re really quick, two of my favorite modifiers, both used for very different situations. The deep focus reflector is used outside for action shots of athletes. Anytime I wanna concentrate light and have to back up my light source to underexpose the sky if it's bright, the 24 inch Joe Grimes Beauty Dish has a deflector plate on the inside that spreads out the light. It doesn't, it eliminates the hot spot. It has diffusion on the outside that I almost always use because that makes it softer, but that's great for portraits because it's portable. It's, it's not huge, but it is, it's big enough to give you soft light and it's not gonna blow around in the wind or anything like that. It's easy to use on location. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, I'd appreciate a like. Hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified whenever I post new videos. There's going to be a lot more to come. See you next time.